All right, so I'm going to do a bit of a bike check on my Slayer. I'm not going to go into many super technical reviews of the components. Um, we're not going to do like fork settings or anything like that. This will be just simply my bike, um, the components on it, why I chose those, and kind of roughly how it's set up. Every single um, component on here was chosen. There's a reason for all of that. So, um, so yes, yeah, to, to start out, it is a uh, Rocky Mountain Slayer 29, uh, the 2020 model. I got the C50 model as a full bike but pretty much the only thing that is stock uh, as far as that goes is the cassette um, and there's a reason for that like I said but we'll get into that a little later so I got it as a C50 build um, but then pretty much stripped everything off and put on all of these components a bit of a, a bit of a backstory on me um, I am a I used to be a downhill racer um, kind of turned enduro as a primary focus in 2019, I would say. Still, I still plan on doing some downhill racing, but um, just for the accessibility of where I live on the North Shore, it's much easier to train for um, enduro. Just get out on your bike and uh, give it a pedal rather than needing a shuttle or something like that. I still love downhill racing. I'll uh, always love it, always do it. I always consider myself a downhill racer, but that's kind of my, my background, so a lot of these components kind of change over. Um, not to kind of toot my own horn, but I always try to be humble. Yeah, I, I was top 10 for a few years overall. I think back in 2017, 18, around there, maybe 2016 as well, in uh, the pro category, so I ride hard, I ride fast. So that'll be reflected in uh, a lot of the components in the setup here. So let's get into it. Starting on the front here, I guess start out with the, the wheel trace. Um, so on the front, I have a, both wheels, front and rear, are the stands flow. In the front, I have an MK3 rim laced to a, an XTR hub. Um, there's just a little Garmin uh, speed sensor there. And then uh, in the rear, I have the EX3. Um, that's laced to a, a DT Swiss 350 hub in the rear. And the reason I, I went with the MK3 in the front and the EX3 in the back is because, well, I ride an XL. I'm 6'3", around 190 pounds. Um, so I'm a bigger, bigger than average, heavier than average person uh, for mountain biking. And um, yeah, the EX3 is relatively new, but it's a bit beefier and burlier rim than the MK3. I honestly can say that over the course of my racing, I've only actually broken one front wheel. I've worn out a couple other, but um, those were on my bike for literally four seasons of racing, so can't expect it to last much longer than that, but uh, I don't go through front rims nearly as often. There's a few dings in there, but so you can see this actually has a sticker on here that's from the EWS in uh, where was that? Columbia in 2018. So this rim is uh, it's been around. I think it was a rear wheel at one point, but I uh, took it apart and laced it to the front hub. And yeah, I've been loving it. So they're uh, nice and wide internal, so you get a good tire profile. The MK3 is just a little bit lighter, so that's why I put it on the front. As far as tires go. Um, I'm usually a Minion uh, DHF kind of guy, but uh, went, to dis uh, went to try out the, the Asa guy in the front. Again, I tried it when they first came out, I think in 2018. wasn't too big of a fan, but I think that's kind of grown on me, so both these tires need to be replaced. They're pretty roached. But yeah, Asa guy in the front, DHF in the rear. I'm not a really fan of the DHR. Um, I've always run DHFs in the rear for a long, long time, so usually run downhill casing, front and rear. I know this one's double down, but obviously there's no races this year, so I haven't been too concerned with that. 2020 was the first season I tried Cushcore. I only have it in the rear right now, and yeah, I, I've been impressed with it for a few reasons. Obviously, the, 
rim protection being one of them. They do help cut down on a lot of dents and dings. I heard someone else say it, but it's like a volume spacer for your tires. So it helps create kind of a softer, a more ramp up feeling in your tires rather than like a linear squish. It's a little bit softer at the beginning. And then uh, as you push harder, get into deeper compressions. Um, yeah, the volume kind of increases. So I'm not running it at the front in the moment. I did have them front and rear for a while, but um, took it out of the front because it actually, for me riding on the shore, it didn't help out a lot. I run harder compound tires front and rear, so I'm not too concerned about the rim protection and I didn't feel too much benefit with it being in the front. So yeah, I just haven't put it back in. Once we get to kind of more longer, rougher tracks, once all the lockdowns and stuff kind of finish and where we can get back to racing i'll experiment more in uh, whistler or some some faster rougher tracks to see if it actually helps with the hand dampening i know um, for some people it does but for me i didn't feel too much of a difference honestly on the on the shore but on the shore we don't really have too much of that fast long descents where your hands get fatigued so i just haven't felt the need um, and it's easier just to swap tires without Kush course, so that's why I did it. Um, so yeah, that was the, yeah, wheels, tires. Move up to the fork, um, the Fox 38. Like I said in my previous video, I separated my shoulder uh, about a month ago now, um, so I'm still not back up to riding um, in full full strength. I've only done a couple rides on this fork, and they were, yeah, last week, so I'm still pretty weak. I am not able to push the fork as much as I, I want to, I'll, uh, I'll get into that, so I'm not gonna not gonna go into too specifics on that specific fork, but um, yeah, Fox suspension and dropper post got the 38 in the front, um, float X2 in the back, and then a 175 millimeter transfer post. The Fox stuff is awesome; you get great adjustability. Um, I like it in the uh, particularly the forks because they're really nice and supportive. I like a higher front end in general. Um, and I found that the other stuff, the Rock Shocks, um, it's a bit divey for me. Uh, that being said, I haven't ridden it for a while, so they might have changed. But yeah, that's the suspension. So for 2020, the Slayer came with 170 millimeters of travel front and rear. Uh, for 2021, they bumped it up to 180 in the front on the 29 inch uh, models. So that's the only fork I could get. So I got a 180 in the front. Um, I have a the air spring, air spring kit to change it back to 170. Um, like I will probably will. I'm getting an altitude next year. So, or, or I guess this year, but a little bit later. Um, so I have the option I can change it down to 170 or keep it at 180. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, race face Atlas 35 uh, bars. I'm tall, um, quite length, long, lengthy in the arms. So. I keep them at um, 800 full length. I've debated cutting them down, but uh, haven't haven't quite done that yet. I like uh, I like the full full length 800s. So from the cockpit here, guess we'll go move on to the brakes. Um, running Saints, my all-time favorite brake ever since 2013 when these newer ones came out. They've been my favorite brakes. I've run different ones, um, some older older avid stuff like the codes and stuff but uh, these ones they're most powerful they're super easy to bleed super easy to maintain i'd put these brakes on every single bike that i own um, whether that be a trail bike or a downhill bike i've kind of played around with the the new style xt xtr um, and i find that like i've been riding for a very long time um, way longer than i've been racing and um, i found that i prefer brakes that have a much lighter pull. Um, what I mean by that is modulation is a, a word that, get throw, that gets thrown around a lot these days. Um, and yeah, I'm not a fan. I like all the power with as little effort as I can. Um, especially in enduro when you're racing these long, you know, 15, 20 minute stages. Um, I don't want to have to pull harder for my brakes to, to lock up if I need that. And even with the, the newer the newer um, XT, XTR brakes, the four piston, they have more modulation. 
which basically means you have to pull harder to get that power. It's easier for for when you're maybe first starting out or if you're just kind of getting used to terrain, slippery terrain, or it's just a preference, honestly. But um, I prefer all the power with minimal effort. That's why I run these brakes and I have no intention of changing. So yeah, 200 mil rotors front and rear to go along with those. Um, that's what comes stock on these bikes, but honestly, that, I'd put that on any bike anyways. I would imagine that 220 or... 223 millimeter rotors are not too far away from Shimano, so I'll probably switch to those if they come out. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the brake moving along down. Got a couple little accessories, the uh, the new one up light. Um, but I'll get into that system and the little accessories a little bit later. Just go keep on going down. Um, like I said, Float X2 shock. The Slayers come with coil but I prefer air just for more adjustability and it's lighter this bike is a beast I'll get to that a little bit later but um, wherever I can save some weight I prefer it. I'd prefer that for the grips these are uh, the race face strafe which are now discontinued but um, 33 millimeter I have big hands I prefer big uh, grips None of the fancy ergon stuff. Um, I've tried those, but they just don't work for me. So the, the thicker the grip, the better. Um, they are wearing out, so I have a, another pair of race face grips that I'll, I'll probably experiment with. They're just as wide, 33 as, as well. Moving on to the seat here. Um, it is a Synchro Stefino. I'm kind of picky when it comes to, to seats. I'm kind of picky when it comes to most things, but particularly seats, especially this year. I ran a seat that actually came on my 2017 Slayer ever since then, so 17, 18, 19, and then beginning of this year, but then it, it uh, finally broke. Um, so yeah, kind of searched around for another seat. Um, this one is nice and short. Uh, it's even shorter than that, that old WDP one. It's nice, low profile, it's not very thick, and it's narrow, so I found that the seat that this bike came with, it's another WTB, I'm not sure exactly the model, um, but it's too high profile for me, um, it's too thick, which kind of gets in the way, um, and too wide, I don't like, I don't like that, the feeling of having my uh, legs kind of touch the seat when you're kind of standing up a little taller, it's just not comfortable, so I really, uh, I've been really been liking this one, so stoked with it. Uh, 175 transfer post. I already explained that. So yeah, let's get down to the to the drag train. So like I said, every single piece of this drag train is there for a reason. It has a purpose. It has a. I have a mix of XT, XTR, and SLX. Um, every piece has a reason. So we'll start with the shifter. I have a uh, XT shifter. The reason why I went with the XT over the SLX is because you have uh, two clicks on the downshift, where the SLX only has one. Same thing with the uh, XTR shifter, but uh, XTR stuff is really expensive, and honestly, it's a shifter. I'm not really too concerned about the weight. For the cranks, uh, they might look a little funny. These are actually the drivetrain's 12 speed. To, uh, Shimano 12 speed, but um, these cranks are the 11 speed cranks. Um, the reason is because it has a power meter. Um, I always kind of wanted a power meter. I'm kind of a, a geeky, nerdy type when it comes to training. I like stat my stats, but looking at the price of them, like six to eight hundred bucks um, US sometimes, they're way too expensive. Um, but there was a guy in Squamish, I think he was a, yeah, he was a Shimano, and uh, he was sponsored by Stages, and he was just selling a bunch of old stuff. He had these cranks, and they were honestly cheaper than you could get these cranks just without the power meter, so it's a no-brainer there. Um, they are 175 millimeter in length, which is too long for me on this bike. I like the 175 on the Instinct when I had it, just because it has a higher bottom bracket height. Um, but yeah, these, I'm kind of smacking my pedals, smacking the cranks all the time, which um, is not desirable, but 
I, I like the power meter, so um, <laughs> kind of a give and take there. So I'm not going to go and spend a bunch of money on a new crank just because they're 5 millimeters longer. Um, crank Brothers mallet pedals. Uh, I've been on those ever since I've been racing. Uh, I love the feel compared to the Shimano's just because I have them usually set in the 20 degree release angle. When I'm riding, I move around a lot on the bike, and that includes my feet. So the Shimano pedals, the SPDs, have, I think, a 7 or 8 degree release angle. Um, and obviously, we're over, over double that with the Crank Brothers, so I have that flexibility to move around. It also, it's the closest feeling to the flat pedals. I, I always rode flats growing up. Um, it's only... Only since I've started racing that I've gone to clipless, and the transition was a bit rough, but I've tried the SPDs, and uh, I, uh, the, the Crank Brothers, they just feel the closest thing to flats when you're actually riding clips. So, yeah, they wear out fast. Yeah, you have to rebuild them all the time. They're a little bit flimsy and not super reliable, but if you keep on top of your maintenance, they last. I have a pair that uh, just this past, uh, this past summer finally died and I rode those since 2014 so that's a that's a long time anyways moving on um, with the 11 speed cranks I got these in the spring um, when 12 speed Shimano was new and I was kind of worried I was like oh no I have a 12 speed drivetrain 11 speed cranks am I gonna have to put 11 speed drivetrain for this to work um, I called up Lou at Obsession asked him if he knew if there were any 12 speed chain rings that would fit on 11 speed cranks um, he said he'd get back to me, and yeah, it turns out they did. So, this is a wolf tooth chain ring um, with 12 speed spacing but fits on 11 speed crank. This one's a 34 tooth. I have a 32 tooth as well. So, I'm running uh, 34 in the front, and uh, I think it's a 10 to 51 cassette in the back. Now, this is uh, where it gets kind of nerdy again. So, when you move back here, SLX cassette, like I said, 10 to 51. The reason why I went with the SLX rather than an XT, or rather why I haven't switched to an XT, is one, it came on the bike, so I didn't have to spend any money on a new cassette. And two, on the XT and XTR, these top three rings are aluminum. On the SLX, you can see only the top one is aluminum. So when you're climbing, you're usually in these top three gears, Aluminum cogs wear out quicker than steel. Yeah, they're lighter, but they wear out quicker. As you can see by the rest of the bike, I'm not too concerned about weight. So I decided I wanted a little bit more longevity out of the chain ring. Um, try to stay out of this top gear. I'm more of a, like coming from downhill and not really doing a road other than training, I spin quite with a low cadence. So I hardly ever use this top gear, even with a 34 chain ring. Um, if I were to get into the steeper, like obviously we didn't race in 2020, but if we get into the steeper tracks, like in Whistler, um, where there's steeper climbs, I could throw a 32 in there, still not really have to use this one too much. Um, but yeah, that's why I went with the SLX, just for, for more longevity. Um, I don't want to be replacing cassettes all the time because they, they're very expensive. Now, I moved down to the derailleur and the chain, which are the only XTR components on here. So. Um, the reason why I went with an XTR derailleur is because, so I'm used to, I came off of last year, um, and for the past few years before that, only riding on 11 speed drivetrains, so the Shimano 11 speed with the mid cage length, um, derailleurs. Going to the 12 speed with the X, uh, this bike came with XT, I've had XT derailleurs on it before. They have the long cage, so they stick down further, and after, well, I've been racing Enduro since 2017, so 17, 18, 19, I've only actually broken one derailleur, the mid cage, and this year I have already broken three XT derailleurs just from smashing it on uh, rocks. No, no fault to the derailleur at all, it's just that I'm so used to having a shorter, shorter cage derailleur that um, I'm just not used to having to worry about it as much. So, like I said, these derailleurs are very expensive. So, three XT derailleurs at however much they are, 150 bucks. That's a lot. 
and then I noticed that XTR, they have a cassette version that uh, goes from a 10 to a 45 tooth chainring, or a cassette, and the mid-cage derailleur. So that's what I did. I just bought the mid-cage derailleur. I've had it on there for half a season now. Haven't smashed it, as you can see. Maybe a little bit of rubbing, but it's been working out very well. Um, I kind of had the expectation that I would not be able to use this top ring because this one actually, um, this one's a 45 and this one's a 51. Shimano says it won't work, but it actually does work. It will go into it. I cut the chain a bit short, just expecting not to have to use it. So I try not to uh, as much as I can, but it will work, this mid-cage derailleur on uh, this wide range cassette. So I'm really happy about that, actually. That's the only only time I would ever spend more money because um, I'm actually saving money because I'm not smashing derailleurs so often. So, so for the accessories, um, kind of a cool little one here. It's the uh, Samurai Sword tire plug. So unscrew your bar end here and you have a tire plug. They're really good. I've used them, honestly I haven't had to use them on my bike yet, but used them on <laughs> friends' bikes um, and they work really well. Obviously like any tire plug, you just tighten it in there just to make sure it doesn't come out. On this side, there's a, a reamer, so something that if the hole is too small, you can just make it bigger, kind of roughen it up to make sure the tire plug fits. But yeah, for enduro racing, obviously you're out on the bike all day. I uh, don't, well, at least privateers don't have pit support or anything like that, so you gotta carry everything you can on your bike. Um, we're gonna kind of go through that here. So, tire plugs and the handlebar, the mount for my Garmin. Like I said, I like to see the stats, elevation, heart rate, power, uh, direction, all that. We have a, yeah, one up uh, EDC light. I've had the ED, the normal EDC, in all of my bikes since they came out. I love it. I love not having to remember tools in your pocket. You can just grab your bike and go. And the light version, yeah. I found that I didn't really need anything else other than the Allen key too often. So, and you don't have to tap your steer tube, which is nice. Doesn't void your warranty. So yeah, that's when I went up with, uh, when I went with that. Moving down, I have a one up pump, a little one. Um, same thing, works awesome. There is some storage compartment in here. I will need two hands to go into there, so I'll uh, edit that in at the end of the video, show you what's in there, kind of some sneaky little things. You might notice that I don't have a tube. There's a few reasons for that. Like I said, obviously we're not racing this year, and I'm running Kushkor in the rear. So honestly, for local riding, I'd probably just pedal or ride or walk down the mountain rather than T having to deal with the crush court out on the trail. It's not too big of a deal. I've installed a few now and including on my own bike and it, it, it's not too too bad but to have to deal with it on the trail that's a different story. I've never had to do that yet. I've always had the luxury of being in a garage but I don't really want to have to do that. Um, so for lo uh, local riding I just um, don't carry a tube and hope that the tire plugs and uh, tire sealant and everything works out. It's worked out so far. Watch, next ride I'll go to, I'll get a flat, but um, whatever, this tire's done anyways. In the front, um, like I said, I rarely have front wheel issues, so um, I'm not carrying a tube at the moment. When we go into racing next year, in 2021, hopefully, um, I will have an altitude. So... I'll figure out a place to put a tube. I kind of been looking into those kind of super small plastic type tubes. Uh, they're hard to get in North America, but I'll see if I can get one of those. The other reason why I'm not carrying it right now is because this bike is pretty heavy. So it's kind of built to be that way. I haven't built it particularly light. Uh, but that being said, I still have some really good components on, but um, with the 36, this is not including, uh, I haven't weighed it with the 38 yet. The 36, it was 39.4 pounds. So, that's pretty heavy. Heavier than most downhill bikes, I would say. But, 
and uh, especially on the shore kind of everyone has the latest and greatest a lot of people are concerned about weight but hey I mean it's probably easier to lose five pounds off your belly than five pounds on your bike so I think I'll stick to that I'm not too concerned the bike pedals really well and I'm a I'm a strong I'm a strong guy I'm a strong rider so I can push it up the hills I've ridden Lord of the Squirrels and all that and uh yeah, it, it's been fine. The weight doesn't bother me. But I like to keep, uh, don't want to carry, obviously, things I don't need to. So if I do any kind of backcountry or those big rides, like I did at Lord of the Squirrels, I actually, I put on a wheel that didn't have a cush core. So, uh, and I did carry a tube. Um, just so that, you know, when you're when you're out that far away from your car, you need to be prepared for, <laughs> for anything. But yeah, that's kind of the, not very quick, but... Uh, an overview of my bike and uh, the components I have, the reasons why they're there. Hope you enjoyed. So here I am uh, just gonna go over what I have in the EDC pump. So this is the 70cc model, so the shorter one. That means you can only fit the one-up tool by itself. You can't fit the CO2 or um, the bottom part which you can use to store um, the tire plugs or the little quick connect tools but I found that kind of with a, a few things I can sneak into this little one so the difference between the one up EDC and the EDC light are here I have like a, an EDC body here um, with the EDC light you only get the allen key that goes right here so you don't get the tire lever um, you can fit quick links in here um, and then this little green guy is a, a chain breaker and these little tools on the end here those are basically spoke wrenches so with this tool you can break a chain you have your spoke wrench uh, tire lever it's not the best but hey it's better than nothing if that's all you got and I'm pretty sure um, this guy can be used as a chain, chain ring bolt so when you go to strictly the EDC light, you only get that Allen key. If you have an EDC pump like this, you can fit this guy um, in there, but uh, I, I chose to do a little bit of a kind of my own thing. So I'll show you this here. Obviously it comes out. Um, what I have in here is the chain links or the quick connects quick connect links here I do have the um, quick link breaker little pliers here which are really handy um, I have the spare um, some spare tire plugs if I ever need them and then I have a couple of zip ties so I only have two because that's all I could kind of fit in here um, but hey two is better than nothing and these are these are full length just kind of wound them up a bit with some duct tape there so the duct tape might come in handy and these might be able to save you in a race so the only thing that I don't have on the bike or with me right now um, is this guy here so the spoke key and the chain breaker so that is something that I do want so what I was kind of thinking is obviously when I go to the altitude in, uh, when, once I get it, whenever it shows up, I am going to be carrying a tube with it, and I think I'll just wind this up in the tube. So if I ever need it, which I don't, I don't think I'll need. I mean, it's racing; things happen. I don't, I, I don't see myself using it on the trail, but it, it, it could happen. So I think I'll put it in the tube. So I mean, worst case, I might need to use it, but. I think these are the tools that I will I will need more often, so that's why I kind of put them in the more easily accessible part. Uh, that's yeah, that's just the little features that I have in here.